Dibido Francis Kehe is a master of convincing and perseverance with desire to learn of how to build. These are just a few soft skills the Pritzker Prize winner of 2022 has. But what does that has to do with his work? Stay tuned to know more how this skill brought him the Pritzker Prize. He came from a very poor family and his father was the Videsh chief. Uneducated himself, he sent his eldest son Francis Kehe to school to educate himself. Other villagers laughed at village chief's decision, but he wanted his son to be a learned person. Francis Kehe was born in West Africa in a village of Gando, Burkina Faso in 1965. The village had no access to public water or electricity and the literacy rate was below national average of 25%. Francis was the first of his community to attend school. There were no schools in his area, so he lived with his uncle at the age of 7 in other town where he attended school. Later, in 1985, he got a scholarship in Germany for carpentry, where he worked to make roofs and furniture in morning and attended the classes in evening. Fast forward 10 years later, in 1995, he received another scholarship, this time to study architecture at the University of Berlin, one of Europe's most prestigious educational centers, convincing institution to let him educate himself for a lower cost, maybe through his works, but hear me out. Later, he received his degree in 2004. Further, with the help of his colleagues from college, KA founded the association now known as KA Foundation, a non-profit organization dedicated to building projects in the village of Gando. In 2005, he founded his office KA Architecture, which currently has branches in Germany and Burkina Faso. Next, he built his first building in Gando Primary School when he was still in college in 2001. The project was recognized in 2004 with the prestigious Aga Khan Award for the works built in countries with significant Muslim presence. His first project uses clay as the main building element. At the time, villagers thought of clay as poor man's material due to its constant maintenance. Thus, to convince the people in his community that this was a reliable and durable material, Francis availed actual sized models. This power of convincing, turning an idea to school design to serve 150 children and later into a set of buildings that currently serves around 1500 students. Later projects include an extension, teachers housing and library. His efforts to incorporate local manpower into construction sites have already employed hundreds of people and currently all of his projects in Africa are being built by people trained by him. Due to this, they don't have to move away from home and send money back. Besides design practice, Francis also has an academic career. He has been a professor at the Technical University of Manchin since 2017 and has previously studied at Harvard University Graduate School of Design in Massachusetts, USA and Yale School of Architecture in Connecticut, USA. Francis was the first African architect to design a serpentine pavilion invited by London Serpentine Galleries in 2017. The architect imagined a tree-shaped structure with a detached roof and curved walls formed by triangular modules in indigo which represents strength in his culture. Dibido in his language means the one who came to organize things. Coincidence or not, Francis Kehe is the first black architect to receive the highest honor in architecture, the Pritzker Prize, and also the first African to receive it. Let's see some of his projects. Gando Primary School. Firstly, Kehe had to convince the villagers He gathered all villagers to demonstrate this low-cost technology of making a brick out of cement and clay. It is also called compact clay blocks. Those displaying his way with words combined with pure knowledge to make great things happen. Because after proof of concept, all people of village 
from old men to women of the village helped to build the school. Secondly, due to usage of compact clay bricks, it reduced the cost and inner temperature from 47 degrees Celsius to 37 degrees Celsius. Thirdly, a dry stack brick ceiling is introduced in between roof, allowing for maximum ventilation. Cool air is pulled in from the interior windows while hot air is released out through perforations in clay roof thus solving the ventilation issues. Furthermore, this material did not repel water. Thus, to circumvent this, KK used corrugated sheets which absorbed his direct sunlight. Further, to teach and train workers, KK himself made a vault on 1 is to 1 scale and to demonstrate it, it doesn't fall, thus convincing people who cannot read and write to make such structure that it is not magic but engineering and design. After this, whenever a structure was built, people used to come and stand on it to celebrate the erection of a structure. This was not ideal for KK. So many times he used to block people from coming and standing on the structure all the time. Initially, the school accommodated around 100 students and later more than 300 students wanted to join in the same year. The design is simple and planning is sort of like an onion where the classrooms are in the center, offset by the plinth, which covered by eucalyptus trees and acts as corridors. The tall center pivot windows opening both ways controls ventilation and sunlight. Further, the painted window frames you see are not done by architect Francis, but the students themselves. After Kehe returned from Germany to raise funds, he saw this and instantly realized that we as architects design for communities. This project is a great example of traditional building and modern engineering methods. With support of his community and funds and funds raised through KH Foundation, KH was able to realize his very first building. Secondly, we have healthcare center in Leo, in Burkina Faso. A German doctor traveled to Burkina Faso and provided his services for three months to people in Burkina Faso and asked KH to design a healthcare center. The clinic has grown from an operation block to maternity ward and later housing for doctors. Firstly, the site looks like an oasis with clinic in the front and housing for doctors in the back with corrugated sheets and solar panels. The clinic also has a play area for kids while parents or relatives come for checkup. Secondly, the structure is made with clay and is often used in West Africa due to its availability. Thirdly, this project is essential for KH because of no facilities, people of West Africa only went to hospitals when they were about to die or else only to return with more severe disease. Thus, this is a turnaround for healthcare for this part of country. Housing is later added to the site as more doctors wanted to work in Burkina Faso. Thus, KH went and studied the housing in Gando to learn from the vernacular. Lastly, he saw the boxes which replaced the huts. Thus, he wanted to make better boxes. It is simple, modern and clean from inside. It is also a lot spacious, thus making it a luxury in Faso to have spaces on both sides of a bed. These quarters are also used for patients when there is no doctor occupying the space at the moment. Thirdly, we have Serpentine Gallery in London. When KH got a letter from Serpentine Gallery to design a pavilion, he dismissed it as a joke and went to Burkina Faso for some work. Upon reaching Burkina Faso, the gallery had inquired as why he did not reply to the request. To which KH replied, I thought it was a joke and considered the commission beyond his level. But soon enough, he submitted his design sketch and to his surprise, he got selected. Firstly, with the support of his office, he tried to mimic the brickwork of London. But being expensive and tight on schedule, he opted for wood structure. Secondly, he painted all the prefabricated wood in indigo blue the color being very important in his culture. Thirdly, the roof was a big funnel to collect water. This was an intelligent way 
not only to find a way to collect water but to also signify the importance of natural resources and how we should always respect nature this was a great way for communities to come together and spend time in the pavilion fourthly we have silent pavilion the clients were a couple who were artists and musicians and philanthropists who wanted to create a pavilion on a hike trail for people to visit or relax in the pavilion is inspired from toguna a toguna or a pavilion's hut is a public building erected by the west africa in country of mali the togunas are usually located in the center of the village togunas are built with a very low roof with express purpose of forcing visitors to rather sit than stand This helps in calming people and is usually used by village elders. KH Architecture Design Salon, the gathering pavilion for the Tippet Rice Art Center, located in slightly sunken landform between main facilities of art center and the start of hiking tracks. The pavilion nestles in clearing surrounded by aspen trees facing a small creek. The sustainable pine wood used for entire pavilion locally sourced from a natural pruning that saves forest from parasitic bugs which is used in its raw state the logs of the canopy are glued in circular bundles within a modular hexagonal structure in weathering steel supported by seven steel columns the upper surface of canopy is carved sinuously to blend into surrounding hills xylem is a very powerful name for pavilion because xylem is the nutrient core of a tree Now we have wood both on the floor as sitting and as roof and the people occupying the space are metaphors for the nutrients within this pavilion and they are symbol for reconnection with the nature really amazing lisa shower and bit campus the client is a german couple the site which was assigned is barren land and no crops could be grown there kehe was flabbergasted but the villagers welcome kehe and pleaded him to make this infrastructure for them this move kehe and he accepted the commission school has soccer basketball and volleyball fields to play in with the water towers firstly there were no trees on site and was a completely barren land the site endured harsh harmata winds from the desert bringing sand with it therefore kehe wanted to make a compound which protected against the winds and students could work and study in peace inside the structure the corridor were placed outside the building so to protect against the winds the architect covered it with brisole by using eucalyptus tree barks which grow straight when cut properly he brought it on site where women of the village sanded it down and made it useful for construction Next, KH used laterite, which is similar to clay, but not used much because it wasn't modern. The material it wasn't readily available and had to be extracted from quarry and cut according to specification. Furthermore, the site was expanded to five more classrooms, teaching IT, through a request of the client. Then he constructed the inclined roof system through which he ventilated the classrooms. Simple yet elegant design, where he left space in between roof to let the hot air move out of the classroom and let the cool breeze inside. The auditorium was just two classes without the wall dividing the rooms, and it accommodated hundred students inside. To provide internet access to all kids, KH put an antenna on the top of two-story buildings, including offices and assembly rooms. The campus is ever growing, with trees planted it, providing shade for future generations. As I said earlier, Kehe began his career by convincing people to build his structure. This is a major superpower for anyone in this industry who wants to survive and thrive. That's it for the video, guys. This is my take on who, according to me, is one of the most humble persons I've ever read or researched about. The point of this video is not only that a person can come from humble beginnings and achieve success beyond measures. it is to identify your strengths and to keep on working on your talents because that is uh, that is the only strength and inner validation you will ever need to grow and succeed in your own field thank you and if you think you have learned anything from this video please hit like share this video among your friends and peers and subscribe to my channel 
Thank you and see you in the next video. In our off 2022. The project was recognized. Project was recognized in 2004. The clients were a couple who were artists and musicians. The clients were a couple who were artisans.